Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is the May 18th, 2021 meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the director of the Department of Public Works and I am the chair. I wanna announce the audio and video recording of this meeting um, and we will um, get started. Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll. Donna. Here. Jody. Jody Casper, I see you, there you are. Um, Jamie, are you here at the moment? Yes, I am. Here. Um, Devin? Here. Wayne? Here. Nancy? Here. Karen Foster? I know you're sitting on the side of the road. Yeah, she's um, she's, she's muted not with camera off, so she's... Um, so is she a voting member today then or no? I, I would say she would not be a voting member today since she's not able to participate. Um, Gary Hartwell is not here, correct? Um, not Jim? Here. Jim is here. And Adam, I don't see Adam. That's it. Five, six, okay, so we do have a quorum just barely. Okay, good. Um, so next, um, we'll move to public comment. Is there any member of the public here who would like to address the commission on any topic? Nick, I see your hand up. We will unmute you in a moment. Go ahead, Nick. Thank you very much. And I appreciate um, your time and efforts at this challenging time. Uh, obviously we're at a point in time with the main street uh, doing the once in a generation reconstruction. And I think this is really an, a very exciting opportunity to create a more beautiful, innovative, inclusive and prosperous Northampton center. Um, as we know, there are multiple options that have been proposed for the project. Each of them has various trade-offs. Um, one contention obviously has been around parking, and I'd like to just kind of share some data and reflections, uh, not anecdotes to the conversation. I've been rereading the city's parking study from 2015, which I think has lots of useful guidance for us. They describe that the parking public supply includes 400 and 543 on-street spaces and 1,150 off-street spaces, including the parking garage. And a small fraction of the on-street spaces, you know, I believe less than 10% are on Main Street. We know as is common nationwide, peak usage of both on-street and off-street parking is, is never full, but you know, typically they found just over 80%. And they concluded that under most typical conditions, a driver should be able to find parking within a few blocks. The report also estimated that peak daytime usage um, upwards of 23% or nearly a quarter of, of spaces um, uh, on Main Street were by cars staying three or more hours, which obviously limits turnover for visitors. And presumably many of those belong to downtown employees. And perhaps we can find creative ways to bring those employees to downtown without permanently taking so much parking. Obviously, I don't think it's practical to look to Main Street as the primary location for parking. Um, but the real good news is that, as you all are aware, other spaces exist and can, now, can allow us to support our Main Street businesses and street life without devoting such a large chunk of Main Street to parking. I'm really excited by the fact that in response to the parking study and your work, the city installed improved wayfinding signs, including the two signs that display the number of open spaces in the centrally located Gare parking garage. Uh, visitors arriving at the garage can be directed with knowledge that there are spaces. And I think that's a really great step. And my question for fear of the deliberations is whether this information could be available in other ways as well on an app or a website so that those arising, you know, driving from out of town can easily scout parking options. I suspect that this would facilitate more use of these existing spaces and address the modest number of parking spaces, some of which could be turned into 15 minute spaces to allow people to pick stuff up from restaurants and businesses. Um, again, I think it's just important to be thinking about different ways of approaching the parking and I appreciate you for your efforts on that front. Thanks so much for your comments, we appreciate it. Okay, next is 
Diana. Good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to just make a public comment. I have applied for the vacancy on the Transportation and Parking Commission, and it was suggested when I was speaking with some people with the city that it would be a good idea for me to come on and introduce myself before any action was taken on the application. So I am here to do that. Again, my name is Diana Day. I am a recent transplant to Northampton from the state of Arizona, where I worked for many years uh, defending the Department of Transportation, the State Department. I have worked as an attorney defending uh, municipal roadways, state roadways, and through that work have worked with uh, traffic engineers, roadway designers, traffic planners, uh, and defensive liability lawsuits. So through that, I have become very familiar with the ASHTO design guidelines, the MUTCD guidelines, and have a strong interest in um, safe and efficient roads and sustainability above all. And so I thought that this commission might be a, a way to help give back to the community if that's acceptable. So I'm just here to introduce myself and thank everybody for your time. Thanks so much for coming out this afternoon. We appreciate it. Great to meet you. And um, I, I know that you had uh, spoken with Cindy and uh, I'm sure that we'll be in touch. So thank you so much. And thank you. Take care. Fred, I see your hand raised. Welcome. We will unmute you momentarily. Yeah, uh, my name is Fred Zimlock. I live in Ward 3, and I have a simple question. I was at a CBAC meeting a few weeks ago, and um, Carolyn Mish mentioned the fact that there was a possibility of turning Phillips Place into a side street. Could you tell me what that means if it's turned into a side street with respect to traffic, parking, and snow plowing? So Fred, during the public comment section, as you know, um, it, it's not typically a back and forth conversation. Um, I will be in touch with you tomorrow uh, about your question. Is the best way to get you email or you want me to give you a call? Email is fine. Thank you. Okay. All right, sir. I'll be in touch tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Okay. Is there any other member of the public who is here who would like to make a comment? to the commission. Okay, seeing none, um, let's move to item three, approval of minutes from previous meeting, which is March 16th, 2021. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation for approval of the minutes from March 16th, 2021, please. I'll make the motion. Devin seconds. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, roll please, Beth. Anna, how do you vote? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Uh, I was not present, so I'll abstain. Devin? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Aaron, still not talking? Um, and Jim. Yes. Six okay. yeses and one abstention. Motion passes. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next is reports from departments and subcommittees. So I'll start with uh, public works updates. Uh, some of you may have seen in your travels, we are replacing the water main on Atwood Drive and also repaving that road. So construction is ongoing. Um, we expect that project to be uh, wrapping up this summer. Um, we are also going to be paving several city streets this summer, Pine Street, Warfield Place, Hayes Avenue, Meadow Street, and Loudville Road. Um, this project is gonna include reclaiming the pavement, drainage, sore pipe replacements, bridge repairs, intersection reconfiguration on uh, Pine Street, Maple Street, and Marin Terrace, which we discussed at length uh, at, at, before this commission uh, a couple of months back. 
a lot of sidewalk improvements and curb work. Um, the project has been awarded to Warner Brothers and we expect uh, construction to get started next month. Um, we are finishing up punch list items on North Farms Road. This was last year's paving project, $2 million project. It did about uh, two miles of roadway. Um, from uh, the Arcanum Field area all the way to the city limit with uh, Williamsburg. Um, and there are also two mass DOT projects that are, uh, that are underway, uh, King Street and Damon Road. Um, again, most, uh, both mass DOT tip projects. So that's what's happening in the DPW world. Wayne, you got anything for us? Um, not much, but the picture Main Street, which Nick Horton talked about, is moving towards. Our designers are working on the next step. We expect a form tentatively the third week in June. Um, both the Pleasant Street project and the Leonard Street projects that I talked about at the last meeting uh, are about to go to bid. So Ple uh, Pleasant Street's from Hawk uh, from um, yeah, Hockman Road down to the roundabout. It should be going to bid probably about two weeks. Leonard Street, about the same time period. Um, our four new bike or six new, four new, I'm sorry, four new Valley bike stations got delayed because it was a gas leak that Columbia Gas had at Riverside Drive, so we couldn't install till they cleaned that up. So I think the last meeting I said it was about to happen. Now that's been cleaned up, we expect them to break ground in the next couple of weeks. So I think that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Anyone else have any updates for us? Okay, hearing none. Next, I'll go to matters before the commission. 5A, proposed ordinance on adding accessible parking spaces at the Connecticut Greenway River parking lot. I'll read the ordinance. In the year 2021, upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, an ordinance relative to off-street handicapped parking spaces an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton in city council assembled as follows. Section one, that section 312-117 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-117, schedule 16, on street and off street handicapped parking spaces. B, off street handicapped parking spaces are established as follows. Parking lot in the location of, I'm sorry, parking lot, Connecticut River Greenway lot location, two spaces on the Eastern edge of the parking lot. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So move, Wayne. Second, Jody. Okay, Wayne, you wanna uh, explain this? Sure, so we have a small grant from the Department of Public Health that's about, um, improving both short-term and long-term accessibility to Canada River Greenway. As part of the short-term project, we were literally charged with finding the lowest hanging fruit that we could do, how we improve some things. And um, Canada River Greenway literally had a trailer parked on top of the handicapped parking spots, which highlighted to us the fact they were not well marked. Um, as we started to look into that, Nancy Forrester pointed out to us that not only not well marked, is actually not an ordinance, so her team probably couldn't even enforce it. So this is sort of, I, I, we're working on the bricks and mortar side, we're gonna install new signs to make them more visible. This ordinance makes it legal. You will see this also raised for us, we realize we don't think we have ordinances for any of the handicapped parking in any recreation areas. So we're in the process of doing an audit for that. So longer term, you're gonna see an ordinance probably for every recreation area. But this is the only one we're ready for today. Thanks, Wayne. Is there any discussion on the proposed ordinance? Nancy? Now that we um, have an opportunity to put in um, a lot of new signage as these are adopted, um, I would like to request that we use the um, active icon on the signs as opposed to the static um, traditional icon. Um, I frankly don't know if that is something that we can just go to that um, or if that is like a state by state thing. I know New York is doing it. I frankly don't know whether we can or can't in Massachusetts. I think what we will do internally at the DPW is we will see what, if 
if the signage standards have been updated um, the, through the the um, the uniform traffic control, you know, the METCD um, the signage has been updated. If it has, I have no objections to um, kind of rolling this out on a case by case basis as right. we install new. Um, it provided that we are legally able to do that. Right. So, it, you know, we obviously have standard signs that we need to install. So as long as this sign is considered to be standard, um, I certainly have no objections. Donna, um, can I have it, one thing to that? Yep, go ahead, Wayne. So uh, uh, Keith Benoit in my office, who's our ADA coordinator, he looked into it at least from ADA, thinks the signs are allowed and we did order two with that active. The, the two new blue signs we're getting do have that active. So you already ordered the signs, Wayne? Yes. For, for these two parking guys, spots? You. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think that, you know, prior to their implementation on a public way, I would need to confirm um, that, that these are standard and accepted signs. At a parking lot's a little bit different than, than if I were to put these things on a road somewhere. Great. Councilor Nash. Yeah, I, I just want to say for the on behalf of the muted counselor Foster that she would completely support that idea of the active signs and together we would both strongly support this initiative. Wayne, go Wayne, go on this, you know, um, having accessible spaces for all of our recreational areas is a great idea. So thank you. This is something that um, counselor Foster brought to my attention. And so um, this all, you know, kudos to her on this whole thing. I, I really appreciate the information pass on. Okay, thanks, Nancy. Any further discussion on this? Okay, hearing none, Beth, roll please. Anna? Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin? Yes. Wayne? Is that Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Seven yeas passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay, 5B, updates on certain previously submitted traffic calming requests. Um, so this is as part of our new traffic calming process, which we, uh, which this commission implemented last year. What I like to do is time allows is to update the commission on the status of various, previ uh, various previously submitted traffic calming requests. So that's what this agenda item seeks to do. There are three that I would like to talk about this afternoon, Hatfield Street, Cross Street, and Pine Street. Um, and I just wanna give uh, brief updates on where we are with these three locations. The first is a traffic calming request for Hatfield Street that was submitted to us back in November. And the resident concern was lack of safe bicycle routes between the downtown area and the River Valley Co-op, um, as well as pedestrian concerns on Hatfield Street and general uh, speeding concerns. Um, so as many of you may know, there has been a uh, ongoing dialogue around the Mass DOT project to reconstruct the intersection of Hatfield and North King Street that has been um, held up by a, a variety of uh, conversations and challenges um, around um, excavation in an area where there uh, are, are uh, antiquities or, or um, a historical sites. Um, the future of that project um, appears to be in question. Um, at, at this time, it, we are not able to take any action on this request as um, we would not put uh, city resources into a street um, that is um, looking like Mass DOT may be doing a significant reconstruction of it. Um, the one thing I will mention that we can control 
um, is street lighting. Um, and uh, there is um, kind of a dark area over the, the crosswalk at the intersection of Hatfield Street and Bridge Road. Um, street lighting is not under the jurisdiction of the DPW, it's under the jurisdiction of central services, but our intention is to work with um, the director of that department to see if we can improve the street lighting in that area that was actually um, a recommendation from the police department. Um, but at this time we will not be taking any action uh, for traffic calming measures on Hatfield Street until we have some level of resolution from MassDOT. Uh, about what is going to happen with that intersection. Um, and Wayne, I don't know if you have anything else to add on that, um, but that's that's my update on that. I yeah, I mean, I, I think this is implied what you said, but MassDOT today did cancel the roundabout project. Um, so they're hiring an engineering team. So they're not giving up on solving the problem, but they're hiring. An so they've canceled the project, they're canceling the contract, and they're going to hire an engineering team to look at the options. So, it's still in flux, as you said, but it's not in the short term flux as we'd hope. It's going to be a longer term project. Okay. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. Okay. I see your hand up, Wayne, but maybe that's. Is there anything else, or is that just a. Okay. No, yeah, sorry. A, a, a glitch. Okay. All right, um, next is Cross Street. Um, we received a traffic calming request for Cross Street at Bliss Street. This was on November 15th of 2020. The resident concern was that there was no stop sign uh, at the T intersection of Cross and Bliss Street, uh, that the visibility is poor. Um, and they were hoping that uh, a stop sign could be installed at the bottom of Cross Street. Um, so we have discussed Cross Street and this intersection in particular at length at this commission. We have implemented a series of ordinances meant to um, enhance that intersection and enhance safety on that street in terms of parking in general. Um, and those just were passed by city council, including a stop sign at this very location, Cross and Bliss. So my department will be installing those signs in the coming weeks in preparation for the summer season and a possible influx of, of traffic to park along the river there. Um, so we will be working to implement the recommendations of this commission and ultimately the positive vote of the city council. So um, this traffic calming request can therefore be closed as it has been resolved. Um, so that is Cross Street. And the final update I want to give is on the Pine Street reconstruction project, um, which we're, I'm sorry. Um, some hands done. Yes, uh, sorry. I just saw that. Uh, Councillor Jarrett, I see your hand. Go ahead. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, we're, we're going to unmute you, Councillor. Hold on just a moment. You should have a message telling you to unmute yourself. There it goes. There you go. Great. Thank you. Okay. It appeared on the wrong screen. Uh, thank you all. Uh, uh, Regarding Bliss and Cross Street, uh, yes, the stop sign will be in place, and, and that, that is, is great that that's moved through. Um, another concern, though, has to do, and I think this is zoning enforcement issue, um, that there's a hedge on the corner and um, that has not been trimmed down to the required three feet. And it's been quite a while, so I just wanted to see if, if that's something that I should follow up directly with the, the building commissioner or if the DBW is also working on conveying that request. Yeah, this and this is um, this this needs to come through the DPW. We have had a um, uh, an ongoing conversation with that property owner, and um, the actual enforcement of the ordinances can be difficult. Um, ultimately, the city may end up removing that hedge if the property owner does not do it. Um, so that is something that my department will follow up on, but it is uh, often difficult to achieve the desired result um, with property owners such as this one. Um, I, I may ask for your assistance with this. And I, I will be in touch. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Devin, I see your hand up. Yes, thank you. My question was also about the visibility in the hedge. So he, we've got it. Thanks. Yeah, that that hedge is tough. I have I, I have several places like that around the city, and it's um, it's it's difficult to um, to chase down. Um, Beth, can you please reflect in the minutes that Adam has joined us? He joined about ten minutes ago. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so the last update I have is regarding Pine Street. Um, so as, as part of the conversation that went on here at this commission about the reconstruction of Pine Street and the intersection improvements at Pine, Maple and Man Terrace, um, as well as our construction plans for Pine Street as a whole, several residents submitted traffic calming requests to us um, through the through our online portal, citing high speeds, truck traffic, um, and uh, asking for some level of relief, such as um, speed humps or or other traffic calming measures due to um, speeding traffic. So, um, we requested that the police department collect some data for us on Pine Street. Um, and Chief Casper, if you would be willing to let us know um, what the results of that were, that'd be great. In short, there's no speeding problem on Pine Street. <laughs> I'm having trouble bringing up my document. Um, but yeah, we put it in at a little bit further down Pine and on the longest straightaway so that when our when our traffic officer goes out and installs this device, uh, they look for the longest straightaway on the street where the speeding problem is likely to be the worst. Uh, the device was installed for about five days, the traffic was measured, and there was not a significant speeding problem there. So that's the outcome of the uh, speed data. And it, thanks, Chief. And I can add to that a little bit. We've collected data twice. We collected data back um, around 2014. And uh, the chief, uh, as she mentioned, just collected it now. And uh, interestingly, the 85th percentile speeds were nearly identical um, almost seven years later. Um, what we were seeing, and I just sort of, um, you know, top of my head numbers, but the posted speed limit is 30 miles an hour, and we are seeing people traveling uh, at 30 miles an hour, uh, or, you know, one or two miles an hour below that as an 85th percentile speed. Um, and, you know, when we are designing roadway construction projects, you know, we have places where people are exceeding the speed limit by 10 or 15 miles an hour. This is just not one of those places. And we're, we're certainly sympathetic to the residents who feel like cars may seem to be speeding, but, but the data just does not back that up. Um, with that said, we have revised our design given the community input to, um, to tighten up two of the intersections on Pine Street um, at Chestnut and Beacon so that they're more right angle intersections, which will create a sort of a, a narrowing effect as people are driving and force cars that are turning instead of being able to, to sort of rock it off you know, to, to the right or to the left, um, it will actually force them to slow down as they are turning and that in and of itself will enhance pedestrian safety. But it, you know, anytime we put in raised crosswalks or speed humps, we're doing it in a place where we have the, a speeding problem, which is a threat to pedestrians. And, and there just is not that dynamic here. The other thing that I want to mention is part of this project, um, a, a lot of community members requested dedicated bike lanes. Um, and I thought that this might be an opportunity to just say a few words about kind of uh, shared streets or, or complete streets concepts. We have to work within the public right of way that is available to us. So we have a particular width of roadway that the city owns. And, and in that width of road roadway, we have to put travel lanes, sidewalks, green space, trees, um, you know, our infrastructure like drain pipes and catch basins, 
and you know bike lanes uh, take up space and and ultimately we have a lot of uh, conflicting priorities but it, the math does not work and so we are not able to install dedicated bike lanes on Pine Street because we just do not have the right of way with there to put in a five foot bike lane um, which it would also additionally prohibit parking uh, the entire length of the street if we were to put in a bike lane because you can't park in a bike lane. Um, so space constraints are, are going to prohibit this, but we are mindful that, that there are a lot of bicyclists on the street. So what we will be doing is installing um, uh, pavement markings that, that depict the fact that the roadway is shared with bicycles. Um, and, and those are um, markings that you see uh, around the city in a lot of locations. And hopefully that will uh, communicate to motorists that, that this is a shared space. So we're very mindful of, of sort of complete streets concept in design, but at the end of the day, um, the space we have to work with is the space we have to work with. I'll also mention that, that we are reconstructing um, quite a bit of sidewalk to be ADA compliant the entire length of the street. Um, so ultimately the benefits of this project will be significant. Um, so those are updates um, uh, on those three uh, previously submitted requests. Uh, Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm still adjusting to um, Wayne's news uh, earlier having to do with the topic number one on this list that the uh, that the roundabout has been canceled on King Street. I'm really shocked, and also that the you know that the this traffic calming application is typical of the reason that we wanted to have that roundabout in place. It's that this is somebody who would like to be able to bike to River Valley Market and um, and uh, and make. Uh, both North King Street and Hatfield Street more bike and pedestrian friendly. That was the goal of that project. I'm really disappointed that it's not moving forward. I remember talking about this with Wayne uh, back um, uh, back when I was on the uh, the the public transit subcommittee, probably going back 15 years ago, with people from River Valley Market, in fact, leadership, asking what are we going to do to make better public transportation and make it safer to get to River Valley Market and that this project has now been canceled is just a real bummer in my perspective and and a setback for meeting the needs of this person who made this request so anyway that's what I had to say thank you thanks counselor appreciate it Anyone else have any comments or questions on these uh, three previously submitted traffic calming requests? Okay, hearing none, we'll go to 5C, discussion of a traffic calming request for Old Wilson Road. So again, trying to um, move some of these traffic calming requests through our process here. So we received a traffic calming request for Old Wilson Road on October 30th, 2020. The resident concern was this is a narrow country road. It is used by walkers and those accessing Rocky Road Greenway. Traffic goes fast, noticeable during commuting times. Um, so uh, the, just to um, kind of reiterate what our process is here, the DPW does an engineering assessment of the roadway and the police chief uh, does an assessment of speed data. Uh, so chief, if you want to talk about what you found in, the, um, uh, in, in your speed assessment. Sure. Uh, we look at both speed and collision data. So for collision data, we do a five-year look back to to take a look at collisions, to figure out what caused them and if any contributing factors may have been speed. Uh, in this case, there was only one collision in the five-year period. It involved a deer and a speed was, was not a factor. And that was it, one collision. For speed data, we put the device out there between November 4th and November 11th of 2020. And we measured the speeds of all vehicles during that time, which was 1,693 vehicles which is uh, a, a low traffic volume in general for that amount of time period. 
and data indicated an average speed of 23 miles per hour. So we did not detect a speeding problem uh, on Old Wilson Road uh, or a problem with, with safety and collisions. Thank you, Chief. From an engineering standpoint, a uh, description of the street is that it connects Florence Road to Rocky Hill Road. The street's approximately 4,000 feet long and 20 to 26 feet wide. There is no sidewalk. There are no parking regulations. And there is also no record of a speed regulation on this street. There are, however, 25 mile an hour speed limit signs. It is unclear how or why these were installed since there is not a speed regulation on this street. Um, the majority of the residences are in the northeastern section of the street. So this quarter of a mile section could be considered thickly settled. Now, in the absence of a speed regulation, uh, there is a prima facie speed limit in effect of 30 miles an hour. Outside of that section that is considered thickly settled, um, the statutory speed limit would, would go to 40 miles an hour. Um, so again, it is unclear where these 25 mile an hour speed limits came from, but anytime there's a black and white regulatory speed limit sign, it is required that they be a, a regulation behind that, and there simply is no regulation for this road. Um, I will also add that the pavement condition um, is deficient and, and definitely needs, at, at the very least, a, a mill and overlay. Um, it's not scheduled for road work at this time. So our engineering assessment finds um, that the 25 mile an hour signs are not warranted and are actually not legal. They are incorrect and they need to be removed. Um, and the road uh, is under a statutory speed limit um, which is uh, between 30 and 40 miles an hour, depending on what section of the road you are traveling on. Um, so that coupled with uh, Chief Casper's uh, data collection um, will um, allow us, uh, and this conversation here today will allow the chief and I to actually issue a formal written um, recommendation, which, which we will present um, back to the commission uh, at a later meeting. Um, so that is the results of the DPW assessment and the police assessment. Does anyone on the commission have any comments or questions about Old Wilson Road? Councillor Nash. Well, you know what I'm going to say, that, <laughs> that this would be an opportunity um, for where if we were to adopt that uh, that 25 mile an hour speed limit that we could actually lower the speed limit down to what is the posted speed limit but could not be posted <laughs> oh the the ironies of all of this but anyway that we you know this would be a case of where uh, by adopting the 25 mile an hour speed limit we, we could um, uh, bring things into line for uh, what the neighbors might want here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And, and I'll also add, it's, it's a small section of that roadway um, that would be considered thickly settled for the purposes of 25 miles an hour. So it, it would not, and, and that's the other nuance around that, that 25 mile an hour legislation that it's only in a thickly settled area. So that would actually not cover the entire roadway, but it would cover um, the, the thickly settled area. It is a complicated uh, law and thank you, yes. <laughs> it, it is. Any other comments or questions on Old Wilson Road? We will, my office will do a uh, follow up with the uh, ward counselor and with the resident prior to us making public our recommendation. Um, often in cases like this, we will try to um, come up with a way to um, assuage resident concerns. Um, it, particularly in a situation like this, where we find that that there are uh, speed limit signs which which actually can't be installed, um, so it is likely we will uh, install uh, other types of signage, um, and and I will note that in the in the final report that we generate and bring back to this commission. Okay, if there's no further comments or questions. Seeing none, I will move on to 5D, which is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Orchard Street. 
This was submitted on November 10th, 2020, traffic calming request for Orchard Street. Resident concern was we have a speed limit sign encouraging motorists to drive up to 30 miles an hour on a thickly settled residential street. This is completely inappropriate for a street with children playing. There is no need for a speed limit higher than 20 miles an hour. Our neighbors have their own signs encouraging people to slow down. Um, so that was the uh, request that we had received, uh, sort of uh, paraphrased, but it's on the screen in front of you. And um, there's, there's a few more details here um, looking for uh, speed tables or, or uh, bump outs. Um, so I will ask Chief Casper again to tell us what the results of her uh, data analysis were. Sure, we did a five-year look back on collisions uh, on November 20th, 2020. When we look back over that five-year period, we identified four collisions. Uh, none involved personal injury. These were fairly minor accidents. Uh, one was a rear-end collision. One was a vehicle backing out of a driveway between parked cars. One involved an overtired driver who struck a parked car, and one involved a driver who failed to use care when pulling out <clears throat> in front of traffic on Bridge Street. Um, so there was no one single contributing factor to any of these four uh, collisions. We reviewed speed data uh, between December 7th and 22 of 2020. Uh, during the assessment, we measured 8,472 vehicles. The average speed was 20, the 85th percentile was 26 miles an hour. So we did not detect uh, a speed issue on Orchard Street. Thank you, Chief. And now for our engineering assessment, Orchard Street connects Bridge Street to North Street. The street's approximately 1,200 feet long and 24 feet wide. There are sidewalks on both sides of the street, mostly an asphalt sidewalk with a few sections of concrete. There are tree belts on both sides separating the sidewalks from the roadway. There are crosswalks present at the intersections with Bridge Street and with North Street. There are no other pavement markings that are present on the roadway. There are parking prohibitions on this road. It is prohibited on the northeasterly side for the entire length and on the southwesterly side from Bridge Street to a point 122 feet northwesterly of Bridge Street. There is an existing speed regulation for Orchard Street. Um, it was instituted in 1997. The speed limit beginning at North Street is 30 miles an hour. Pavement is in fair condition. Um, so I, what I would like to discuss today with the commission um, is, is that it appears that, uh, the, that the speed data shows that, that the 85th percentile speeds are below the, the posted speed limit. Um, and so it, what, it, what I thought um, we could uh, discuss today, and the resident who submitted this request is not present, but I wanted to um, throw this out to, to the commission um, in consultation with uh, our traffic engineer. Um, we have a couple of options, and we could have um, what we could do is revise the parking regulations on this street. Um, so that the cars are parked um, sort of on alternating sides so that you don't kind of have a, a straight shot. And that may, um, you know, cause it, it, it may be, um, you know, sort of create a, a, a visual um, that causes uh, motorists to, to slow down. So that's, um, that's one possibility. Um, the other possibility is, is the installation um, of, of uh, like a painted um, sort of uh, bump out. Um, but the, the issue with those bump outs, um, much like um, in, in many places in town is that motorists hit them um, because they are not expecting them. Um, I think the most famous example of this is, is um, the one by Cumberland Farms in, in uh, Florence Center. And uh, I can't tell you how many uh, claims for damages to vehicles and, and people walking into the DPW um, telling us that, that they were passing someone on the right and they they hit that and, and uh, have damaged their car. Um, so those are a couple of possibilities that we have discussed internally. And so 
Um, prior to any further decision making on that, I wanted to kind of throw this out to the commission for conversation um, and see what what if folks have any feedback on that, or if we determine that um, the 85th percentile data shows that there really isn't a speeding problem here. Councillor Nash. It's always me first. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is in Ward 3. I'm familiar with this street and that, um, uh, it, let me ask a question about the bump outs. Would that would be at either end of this? It would be on the Bridge Street side, where that is, where the where Orchard meets Bridge Street, or where would those be? Um, I I mean we could try to target them um, the, in a way that would slow people, and, and and I mean that's also up for discussion as well. Right. You know the the locations would be up for discussion. I mean we want to be careful to not install it in a, a place where people aren't expecting it, um, and and certainly be mindful that um, it it could be a obstruction more than anything. Okay, and, and then as a as a follow up to yeah I so I think along Bridge Street would be actually uh, you know at the intersection of Orchard and Bridge Street, which is part of the the walking school bus safe routes to school um, uh, the, uh, route that um, something there might be uh, worth looking into just discussing and. The other thing is I, I love the, the parking chicane idea. Um, I think we had talked about that before to create a visual interruption on other streets. And I think this would be a great place to try that out. And the last thing I wanna say is that I, I'm really impressed with the traffic data where it actually people are driving under the speed limit. And I very much credit the amount of on-street parking that goes on on Orchard Street that if, if if all of those cars weren't parked there, people would be traveling much faster. So um, I, I think it's a, it's a case for on-street parking actually lowers uh, speed limits and, and being uh, creative here and maybe trying some other ideas. I, I think that would be cool. Thank you, Councillor. Wayne, your hands up. So I'm mostly gonna mimic what the Councillor said, but. I mean, I'm a big believer in bump outs and I don't have a lot of sympathy for people hit them because they should be looking where they're going. But that said, I always think we should try lighter methods first. So I would think that the logical thing is parking in opposite sides of the street. You know, as Jim said, sort of chicane going back and forth and testing that for a while and seeing if that solves it and then revisit if it doesn't solve it. Thanks, Wayne. Devin, go ahead. Donna, did I miss it or did your discussion start with an idea of possibly changing the speed by statute to be according within a mile of the ninth of 85th percentile? That would seem like the most parsimonious, easy thing to do to swap out those signs and we would be responding to the residents' concerns. And that could be done even long before we did the repainting on the street for parking. So is, is that in the discussion? I, that I, I think you might be referring to Old Wilson Road. So Old Wilson Road was the traffic calming request before Orchard Street that that has a um, yeah. No, I got Orchard Street up, and uh, oh, they drive up to thirty miles an hour. I'm sorry, I I read that as it was a thirty mile an hour. Um, so what the posted speed? The posted speed is 30 miles an hour on Orchard Street. That is the posted speed limit. Okay, so I'm back on target now. Would you consider changing it to 25? Well, the, the only way that could be changed to 25 miles an hour is we would have to uh, commission a, a study, uh, an engineering study um, that would have to then be approved by Mass, Mass DOT that would change the regulatory speed limit. We have no ability to change a regulatory speed limit. So one of those black and white signs, it has to go through an engineering process in order to change that speed limit. And is Jody's speed data not a good start on that? It, it's not sufficient for Mass DOT's purposes. So Mass DOT requires a, a very robust um, 
study which requires uh, turning movements and, and counting cars kind of 24 hours a day for an extended period of time. There's, you know, what, what the chief does for data collection for speeding for the purposes of this commission is a, a tip of the iceberg of what would be required to be submitted to MassDOT to change uh, any existing speed regulation. So th this is something we would actually have to contract out with a professional engineering firm um, that, that would have a price tag associated with it. And, and it, even when they were done with the study, so even if we were to contract out with them and you know, money is no object and we say, okay, this is you know, the street we want, we want you to study this, there actually is no guarantee that the results of this study will give us the desired result. They may come back and say, we have analyzed this data and a speed limit of 30 miles an hour is exactly what it should be. So that's the, um, that's the kind of the unpleasant reality of what we're faced with these regulatory speed limits. And, and once a speed regulation is, is set, it's, it's there until it's studied and it's reset. I hope that. Yeah, I, I was very much aware of that for state roads, but I did not realize that that yeah. same overlapping resistance applied to every neighborhood street in the same way. So. It, it does. Yeah. Uh, any, but, yeah. Anywhere you see a black and white regulatory speed speed sign, um, it's actually regulation 7703 from November 21st, 1997. And that's been filed with the state, unfortunately. So thank you. Okay, Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. Uh, Devin, let's talk about reaching out to uh, Senator Comerford and uh, Director Lascalia and I have already had discussions with her. Um, and I, I think it's time to figure out a way to, uh, to crack this nut. It, it, it's really quite silly. You know, we have, we, that uh, Chief Casper has measured the speeds are at 20, 26 miles an hour. 25 makes sense as a posted speed limit. And yet we've got to go through, you know, a whole new study and, and pay a lot of money to reduce the posted speed limit on Orchard Street. It's so um, anyway, I know Senator Cumberford's interested in having the conversation. And maybe this summer when things are a little quieter, it's a good time to go and sit down with her. So. And we'll invite the director. Maybe she'll join us as well. And the chief. It will be a friendly conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so back to um, back to sort of where we go with Orchard Street from here. So we have a couple of ideas on the table. Does the commission feel that the concept of switching out parking um, from one side to the other would be kind of the, the way to start here? And if, if that's the case, what my office will do is is work with Nancy's office to think, and, and Councillor Nash to kind of think about how we may um, uh, chop this up um, to, to create that sort of visual breakup um, to, to keep people traveling at, at, at the low speeds that they're already traveling at. Um, is, is that something the commission feels like would, would be a good course of action here? Devin votes for paint. Line striping. Yeah, well, no, I meant the, to mark the pink parking areas. Oh, okay, okay, parking areas. Okay, sure. Agreed, Mrs. Wayne. Okay. All right, so I think we, um, I think we have some direction. So um, what our next steps will be is, is to, um, we will reconvene internally, the chief and I will, and um, we will, um, as we do with these uh, issue written recommendations based on this conversation. And if ordinance changes are needed around parking, which they always are, they will come back to this commission as a result of, of, um, of this traffic coming request. Any further discussion on this? Okay, hearing none. 
We'll go to new business. Does anybody have any new business to discuss today? Um, yeah. Devin would like to report on old business. Um, following our work on traffic calming on South Street, there was a lot of uh, discussion about it on the labor neighborhood listserv, and I thought it might have generated um, public comment coming to us today. But I, I, um, I, th I think what was missing was that in the neighborhood discussion, and maybe I need to go back and be the person that does this, is to summarize the traffic calming work that was done. It, it was more like I didn't get what I wanted in slowing down the traffic and there was not even a full discussion of all of the active work done by the city in this department, uh, in the departments to, to look at that. So um, I'm happy we didn't have to deal with that today and I will take an action item to explain what that traffic calming process generated for South Street. I had not waded into the discussion yet, but that's because I thought it would happen in this meeting with people coming to the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Devin. And what I can do is um, I can um, it, maybe if, if Cindy has it handy, we can send you the recommendation that the chief and I signed from South Street. I don't know if you have a copy of that, but I can certainly email that to you. Um, yeah, so that you that'd be great. I was going to go back through the minutes, but I just I felt like we didn't we the, a lot of things happened and it just wasn't reflected in the you know, the, the message threads that were showing up. So yeah, sure. the, thank you. Yeah, the chief, the chief and I uh, wrote a very thorough um, mm -hmm. report on, on all actions taken on South Street. So I will make sure that you get that. Thank you. Yeah, I was in on the meeting. I heard the review. I just didn't see anything in writing other than the minutes, but yes, thank you. Sure, okay, we'll get that to you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else have anything? Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, thanks. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Beth, the roll, please. Um, I didn't catch who seconded that, please. Devin. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie, still here? No. Uh, Devin? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Passes unanimously. Six, with six people voting. Okay. Did you get Adam, Beth? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Adam. Adam's muted. Hold on. Let me unmute you. There yes. You go. Okay. Thanks, Adam. Sure. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Great. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next month. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.